world made an edict to kill all the firstborn male children of another race, my race. This leader was known as Pharaoh, and my race was the Israelites. My mother saw fit to deliver me and save me and place me into a, into a, a, a basket and send me down the Nile River. Can you imagine a baby in a basket amongst crocodiles and hippopotamus? And yet, I came upon the shore, the very shore where Pharaoh's own daughter was, as she pulled me out. That's what my name means to be drawn out, and she named me Moses. I'm here today to talk to you about my call, not so much about my childhood, no. It is a different childhood from those very negative and traumatic times I was raised in the very household of Pharaoh with all the advantages that not only the most powerful nation of the world could offer, but the very household of the leader of that nation could offer. I submit to you that whether you feel good about your life and your birth or whether you feel bad about it, God can use you and call you as well. The circumstances help form and shape who you are that you might be a mighty instrument in the hand of a mighty God. But it is about the call. As I grew up, I found an Egyptian whipping one of my brethren. And I was angry, and I wanted to help my brother and deliver him, and I slayed that Egyptian. In Egypt, anyone that kills an Egyptian, the sentence is an automatic death, execution. I wanted to live, so I fled, and I fled across the desert, and I made my home on the other side of the desert of Midian. One day, tending sheep. I saw a wondrous sight upon the top of the mountain, a bush on fire, but yet not burning. I went up to this bush to see what this was, how it could burn and be on fire and not be burnt up. And I heard a voice. The voice called me by name, Moses, Moses. I said, yes, here I am. Take off your shoes for the ground that you are on is holy. I look back upon that time. I don't know so much that I was so much dirty and unworthy of being on the ground as much that this voice wanted me, wanted me to be as close as possible so that my bare feet touched this holy ground. This voice turned out to be the God of my people. He gave me a call, a command to go and free the people, to help fulfill the very promises to my ancestor Abram who later became known as Abraham. He imagined to fulfill these wonderful, rich promises of being a blessing to all the nations, of being a, a, a wondrous and mighty people, and having a land promised from the very God of our peoples. I put up many obstacles of how I was unworthy and could not do it, slow to speech, and not knowing who he was, but God ultimately said, go, take your staff, and go in my name. I am that I am. It's ironic that God showed me who he was as I revealed to God who I was. Moses, Moses, here I am. And God shows God's self to me as I am that I am. As I went back across the desert of Midian, a funny thing happened. A scary thing happened. For an angel of the Lord wanted to kill me. I couldn't imagine after putting up all the objections of trying to do God's will, God would slay me. But it was my wife, my Gentile wife, Sephora, who circumcised my two sons. Because that was the very sign of the covenant of God that God gave with Abel, that all males should be circumcised as a sign of keeping covenant with God. And I had neglected that sign. I had neglected that duty in my own children. But yet God was able to show me through my own Gentile life this wondrous work of keeping covenant. Well, I went before Pharaoh. Some of you know the story, some of the miracles, and how we were brought out with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm of the Lord God Almighty. And we crossed 
the desert of Midian to go to that very same mountain that that bush that was on fire, but yet did not burn. Children, I ask you to think soberly. For if you're called by God to do a mighty work, you must travel the desert three times to go across, get the word, go, get the people, and then bring them back to God. The people that you go to minister to only had to cross once. There's a price that must be paid. But not only in your ministry, in your call, in your own life, value the covenant. Keep it at all costs. I know I sound strict and hard. Well, I am the lawgiver. And the law is given to obey, and you're blessed if you obey. And you're cursed if you disobey. But eventually, Messiah will come. And if you have not met him yet, maybe this weekend you will. He is known as Jesus, full of grace and truth. So this weekend, I ask that you think soberly and somberly of the call. Not so much because we are worth so much, but because the one that calls you is worth so much. Jehovah, God, Almighty, the one that parts seas and delivers from sin and slavery into freedom and to promises and glories, riches, lands flowing with milk and honey. Oh, meet this one called Jesus. Hear his voice. Be somber and sober about it. For you too will have to call others into the waters. Wait in the water.